First, last week we brought you a special World Over preview I moderated of the new film Paul, Apostle of Christ. Well, this week I go on an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with one of its stars. Jim Caviezel returns to a biblical epic, his first since Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ. He's not in the lead, but he plays the pivotal supporting role of St. Luke, the evangelist. We talked about how it felt to be back in this career-defining genre, how he prepared for the role physically and spiritually, and about those rumors of a sequel to The Passion. Here's our exclusive interview with Jim Caviezel. Jim, I want to start with this. First of all, going back into this biblical era for you, yeah. was there any hesitation? I mean, after The Passion, this is really the first biblical epic you've done since The Passion. Well, David Zelon, who did uh, Game Stands Tall with me, this was his uh, project. And uh, initially, uh, when he came to me, I hadn't read the script, but he talked to me about it. And um, my uh, lawyer, 21 years, and one of my dear uh, friends was uh, dying of cancer. Mm. And uh, he came back with me to Poland. I did a, a project back there, and, and uh, we went to Auschwitz. Mm. And you could feel the haunted souls go right through you. I went to the very place where Maximilian Kolbe uh, was martyred. We come home. I say goodbye to Frank. He goes straight to the hospital, and he uh, died two weeks later. Hmm. And uh, so I, w I didn't really have the appetite uh, at the at the time. And two of my friends um, that worked for me uh, committed suicide. Hmm. And um, somewhere in there, um, in the morning period, I get a phone call from Zelon again, and says, "Hey, would you just take a look at the script?" I read it. And instantly, yes, it was, um, I'll, I'll do this. Mm. Um, it, I saw the relationship between Paul and Luke as a mentor in the same way that Frank and was a mentor to me. There's a point when you, someone that close to you, I mean, we'd go in the morning, we, we'd go down to the ocean and, uh, you know, things weren't going right in the business, and oftentimes they're not, but the, uh, I would complain, I'd be, you know, after, shortly after the passion, I couldn't get a job, you know, and, and you can fall into this place of victim, you know, that it isn't fair. Mm -hmm. And, you know, F Frank didn't operate from that point of view. He could always steer me in the right direction. If you co keep going down this uh, point of um, anger, um, eventually it becomes resentment and uh, um, you start wearing it, and I was, and uh, he could always redirect I me, mean, but it was because of our faith. Mm. Um, and forgiveness was a big, big part of this story as it was between mm -hmm. Frank and I and how he saw the world. Being a Christian is not easy. Uh, you, in fact, it's a hard path to follow, but he certainly uh, showed me that it's not weakness, it's not um, passivity, it's being able to look evil straight in the face with love. Hmm. And you read that, when you read the script, you saw and felt that was the, the connection to what was going on that in your was the personal germ. life. Yes. Uh, what did that, you learn about that relationship between Paul and Luke? Because let's face it, we know a lot about Paul. We don't know a whole lot about Luke, other than he wrote the gospel. Right. Uh, there's the second Timothy mention where, you know, uh, Paul says, I'm here alone with Luke. But that's really it. We know he was a doctor. There's only a few details we have. How did you build the character? For well, Andrew Hyatt wrote a, you know, very good, solid script, mm -hmm. and um, and at that point, can you take it to the next level? Mm -hmm. And when he brought um, James Faulkner in, um, we met, I, and just he had this velvety uh, voice, mm -hmm. like a white napkin pull, and I knew we had something special in the in the chemistry there, and then you could start to. But you didn't have many days with him before you started shooting. He no. landed like what, two days, three days before the shoot? Yeah. Well, we but we still uh, we had a few days of, of talking about it, and talking about the story, and um, and uh, and went went through it. Most of my stuff comes from personal experience, and I just happened to have w w was trying to take something that was very um, sad mm -hmm. and lonely and 
and use it for something good. Mm. I figured maybe Luke had something like that. He mentions Mary quite a bit mm. in, the, mm. in his gospel, in fact, more than any of the other writers. Oh. And then there was a hook when he says to Paul, when I, I'd never seen Christ in person, but the moment I heard you preach, I saw Christ in you. Mm. And that was something. And when I think of uh, personally my own industry and how empty, in it, empty it, it is, you, you feel the lack, you feel the pain, you see it in others, and maybe you can give a, a good medicine. Mm -hmm. um, and scripturally, it was there. The performances in there are very strong, but the words are still stronger. What role did prayer and your personal faith have in helping you shape this role? only the second biblical role you've ever done. And was there any hesitation, given how much of your career has been overshadowed by the passion yeah. and your playing of Jesus? I'll tell you something interesting. I, I, uh, Dennis Quaid, when we did Frequency together, mm -hmm. he just says, okay, uh, kid, come here. Uh, he's really funny. He said, uh, I'm going to give you my, I know you didn't ask for it, but I'm going to give you some advice for, as an actor. Uh, Never play Superman and never play Jesus. <laughs> i never forget it. Well, you violated one of the two. Maybe Superman's in there. I did, but I, I ran into him again at the uh, Cannes Film Festival when The Passion came out. Mm -hmm. And he says, he saw it and he just said, listen, that was extraordinary. And, you know, you, you will always be able to say you did something in this, in this business. Mm. You'll always be able to hang your hat on that. And... Uh, he said he was proud. Mm -hmm. And so um, you have to pick the right one, you know? It mm -hmm. just opens up. And uh, I don't know how you turn down Mel Gibson. No. I mean, the, the movie he did prior to that was, the, was Braveheart. And that, and that wasn't too bad of a film. Yeah, I, I noticed yeah. that. <laughs> you know, so uh, I would work with that guy any day. Uh, he's extraordinary. He's the, mm -hmm. the greatest. There was no hesitation then going back to this biblical territory, to this, one? to this one, and the comparisons people might make between sure it is, but that performance yeah, and this yeah, yeah. one. I, I, well, okay, so uh, someone said that recently, they said, well, I saw Jesus in you. I said, thank you. Mm -hmm. I said, aren't we, isn't that what it's supposed to be, that I saw Christ in you? Mm -hmm. it, uh, and, and that's what he saw when he saw uh, Paul, and that was my prayer for, I don't know James's. Um, you asked me about James um, Faulkner earlier, yeah. But, 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 but as far, but as far as uh, faith-wise, um, I prayed all the time for him. I mm -hmm. prayed for our crew because the Holy Spirit can work the way it's going to work. But I don't want to block that. I don't want to block it myself. Mm -hmm. But I also pray for the others that allow that to come come through him. And I and I remember. Um, Someone said that Faulkner said that... Uh, that St. Paul played him, he didn't play St. Paul, that was, which sounded an awful lot like something you told me well, back oh, 10 told, years ago yeah, during the Passion. But, but I'm glad he, that happened. I, I don't mm -hmm. care. Who, someone said one time, so much would get done and no one cared who got the credit. Yeah. I'm glad that, that he said that. that mm -hmm. And you can see that in, in the, uh, the movie. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you go through this... Uh, business and you ask any actor that had that one role that you had that everybody remembers you by so much of the time most actors never get that opportunity mm -hmm. I was very very um, blessed I didn't know all the extracurricular activity was going to go on prior during, during and, and after, after the passion, yeah. but that again comes back to Frank Stewart and says what are you going to do about it are you going to mm -hmm. be a victim mm -hmm. Now, there were moments here that I saw a lot of, um, not only your connection to Frank, but, you know, I thought of that idea of writing it down when, when Paul tells Luke, write this down. Yeah. Take this down. And we added that in there. Really? Yes. That was, a, that was a improv? Write it down. Yes. Really? Write it down. Huh. Yeah. Because that really is what it's about. Yeah, it you is. Have to, you have to take that example of that other party and move with them take their spirit and move forward, particularly if you're leading a community or a business or whatever. But there is that, that notion that people want to know what that person said. Yeah. And I know that. As Mother Angelica's biographer, I, I kept thinking when I heard that moment, because many times I would go visit her and she would tell me, full story, full story, 
right. full story, even when she couldn't speak anymore. Right. She wanted that full story captured. The thing that struck me was the relationship between Luke and Paul, but that message of mentorship, what it means to be a mentor, and then the responsibility of the one that follows, taking not only the example, but making sure you capture the words of that individual. Any lesson there for you? Anything you and I talked about with? this before. Mm -hmm. um, when Mother Angelica died, when Pope John Paul died, yeah. Uh, Billy Graham just died, right. and you've, the, the, the guard is changing now, mm. and now it's, you know, young man, you have to step up. You're the guy now. Mm -hmm. uh, hard, you know, um, great sadness, but we have to believe that, 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 uh, that, that if we do believe in salvation, they're in heaven, and they're not gone. They're actually greater now than ever before, that we carry them with them in our heart. Mm -hmm. and so, um, as Paul says in the film and in, in the good book, you know, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Um, and so, you know, come hell or high water, I'm going to hold on to that. Um, I talked a lot uh, to him while I was filming, you know. Um, I talked a lot to my wife lost her brother this year as well, mm -hmm. and uh, her father. It's just been one after the other, but there's a family that is in heaven, but I dare say that they're not with us. Um, I, I, I feel them, and, uh, mm -hmm. and I pray uh, that God uses them and uh, that they're praying for our work down here, and I certainly felt um, felt that uh, haunting feeling at times that I felt when I was at Auschwitz mm -hmm. um, with Maximilian Kolbe that, you know, people often are afraid to die, but we're all going to die at some point. The, the movie does, does capture the terror of this community and the high cost of believing what they believe. Yeah. Because they're not only, they're not just giving lip service to it, they have to live, they're living in fear and hiding out, sending yeah. children out into the town to yeah. pass messages or to, or to receive things. This goes on today in places like China, in parts of the Middle East, yeah. um, and it's dedicated to those people. I, I think, though, what, uh, what, what I, what, in all of that mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, our Lord doesn't spare his closest friends from undergoing suffering, but what I can tell you from the passion when I was up there on that cross and I was freezing and I had a shoulder separation and I had mm -hmm. uh, hypothermia and, and lung infection and pneumonia and I was on all kinds of medications. I felt something so powerful. Uh, my heart was burning and I, I miss it. I felt heaven in my heart, even as bad as in a situation as that was. Mm -hmm. Look, after the movie was over, I had to have open heart surgery. Yeah. Um, and being struck by lightning was, you know, but I, I never felt abandoned. I felt like he was there with mm -hmm. me. And I want people to know that, even in this suffering, mm -hmm. that our Lord isn't going to abandon him. He's very, very um, real. No. But we need that, though. In order to be authentic, yeah. and that's and a big the, part of this film. And it's, it's yes. Talk for Go a ahead. moment. I mean, you just went through all the things that happened to you on the set of The Passion. I was there for some of that. Why, given all of that, would you willfully embrace going back to play that role again? I know you've talked about doing the resurrection. What are you talking about? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, 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 I see you talking about doing the sequel yes. with Mel again. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of reportage about it. Any hesitation? No, not at all. It's what I was born to do. Hmm. I, I filled it five years ago. This, I have no control over this industry or whoever wants to go. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I have, I know Jesus is a good guy and he's a God and uh, 
Um, I love him, I love his mother, his father, I, I love the whole heaven, you know, and I want to do everything I can to bring as many souls to heaven. I want them to be home. Um, and that's who he is to me. Mm -hmm. He's home. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was uh, doing the Passion, uh, um, I was uh, alone, but uh, it was nothing like what he feels on a day-to-day -day basis. I felt God's love for us, but when I said, I want you to come closer so that the world will see you and not me, and he says, if I, and this is in my dreams now, mm -hmm. if I do, you might not like what you get. I said, mm -hmm. if it's not authentically you, then the world, you know, will see me in the film. Mm -hmm. I want them to see you. When he came close to me, I could feel his brokenness, a broken-hearted world. And Billy Graham would say, "God loves you." But I want, if I had a message to give, I would say, "We need to love God. We need to every day say, "I love you, Lord." He needs to hear it from us in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, because so many of his children do not love him and have forgotten him. And that's not good enough. Mm. And if, when, if uh, and you ask me, would you do this? Yes, absolutely I'd do the resurrection again, be, just for that purpose, so the world will know mm. who he is. Mm -hmm. I, have, will have served my purpose. It doesn't matter if it costs me my life. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. I freely give it mm -hmm. as long as I, because in the next moment that I'm in heaven, we talk about that in the mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. It'll hurt for a bit. It's gone. You're in heaven. Mm -hmm. The film goes into that, and then they start their far, our, our father, and, and uh, you know, with those in prison, you prayed with all of them in prison. Because they're going to be sent off to the... Into the circus, Into maximum. the lions. Yeah. And um, I, someone said to me a long time ago, Jim, um, you know, I, I said, uh, you know, I, I'm the wrong guy for the role of Jesus. And he goes, you know, Jim, his name's Yvonne. He said, mm -hmm. uh, God doesn't always choose the best. <laughs> But he chose you. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. So he, he, there's a purpose for all of us. Tell me what you learned from playing Luke that you didn't expect. He's very different from you. I mean, I know you did the surgeries on the weekend to learn how to <laughs> Yeah, I didn't walk on character. water for this one. You didn't have to walk on no. water, but just a few brain surgeries. <laughs> it was good of you to try that out. Uh, he's a pagan. You know, he probably had it made in the shade. Mm -hmm. He probably had a lot of money. A man um, of means. He, you know, he was important. Probably liked the women. And uh, he could be with whatever he wants. There's no judgment on it. And, and you're going to leave all of that and go to a life of persecution? Living in the shadows, yeah. You see it in my industry. Go to parties, you see people that just are empty. Mm -hmm. It's not appealing to me. And some people are, would, would ra rather go after the things and then um, get nothing here. Th this is, um, having meaning in your life is everything. So being able to have Jesus come through me mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in the resurrection or the passion or whatever, or even the apostle of Christ, that, that heaven can use me and to bring people back. It's, what more could you, you ask for? What do you want people to come away with after seeing this picture? It is a very intimate movie in my Correct. Eyes. Yeah. It's really about the relationship between these two men in the belly of this persecution and the words, ideas, and story of one of them about to disappear from the face of the earth and the other guy struggling to preserve it and embody it. I talked about earlier forgiveness, mm -hmm. courage, that courage is ardent love. 
Love creates change by igniting a passion in each one of us, one person at a time. Paul is the spark that ignites that revolution. Mm -hmm. And what do people need to take away from that today? Why now? And why did you have to be a part of it? Well, I played as Jesus, who's the Son of Man, Son of God. But here's a man who is a, like the head of ISIS, a beast, mm. and he has a massive conversion. It can happen to anybody. Mm. They're open to grace. Um, we've got a lot of people living in the world right now, and there's not a lot of time that we're going to be on this earth if you really think about it. Conversion mm. takes a while. Mm. Uh, it wasn't overnight that Paul uh, was converted, but I believe he probably saw the face of Stephen, mm. who looked up to Jesus and says, I see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the, at the Father, coming in the clouds of heaven, repeating what our Lord had said. Mm -hmm. And the look in his eyes probably haunted Saul mm -hmm. by just one little change of a letter from Saul to Paul. Saul means great one, Paul means little one. In order for us to be great in the eyes of God, we have to be, become very small if we wish to be great. Mm -hmm. There's this piece in the, in the film mm -hmm. where um, it's like you're, you're out on a boat and now Paul is talking to Olivia, uh, Olivia Martinez. Mm -hmm. He plays the Roman soldier. Right. And that, that's my favorite scene in the film yeah. because it's, it's like both of them are speaking from a personal experience and no, no acting is going on here. Mm -hmm. So Paul says he reaches out into the, to the water and he pulls up, he tries to pull the water up and it just seeps through his hands. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like us wanting that, the world mm -hmm. and, and all the things that that, promises. that are uh, promises, but there's a, such a short time mm -hmm. when you're giving all of that up, you're giving that when you look out and see the sea mm -hmm. and it, beyond what you can see, God's offering this to you. That's what he at least has used me to help bring to others. And um, I hope in some way I could answer your question, no, 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 but that, it, I think that was the one reason that kept me in the game to want to do these films, but the, the films still have to be great. Right. And so much of the time that I see these faith-based films that they're so full of uh, saccharin. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, I can't handle that much sugar in my coffee, <laughs> and there's no bitterness. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody flips out if some guy uses a, a, a swear word or, mm -hmm. you know, um, what do you want me to do on, you know, Private Ryan, you know, guys are getting blown up and whatnot, you know, you want me to say, get your rootin' tootin' butts up here or something? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's you know, not reality. No. Given your understanding of where we are in the world today, yeah. how important this message is to be conveyed now, why wouldn't you play Paul? Why Luke? Luke's a supporting character here. I'm just, I'm just helping being an executive producer and getting it made so people can see it. Mm -hmm. I'm just a, I'm the, uh, <laughs> I'm just the mouthpiece for Paul, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, it, it's kind of like... Uh, but no, no, no temptations on your part to play Paul? No, not in this one. No. No, I just Why wanted... Why not? Because I knew I was going to be doing the resurrection and the possibility of that happening at the time that was, I knew that was in the works and I wanted to, I loved this story. I thought that the message, there, there are only so many f scripts that are really good, mm -hmm. okay, whether it be an action film, a comedy, and I've, m my common denominator has always been redemption of some sort that, mm -hmm. that we can be redeemed. It doesn't mean that I'm going to play the good guy in the movie, yeah. but uh, um, I, I knew it would help get it made, but um, 
I don't, uh, I got that, I played Jesus and I th thought that maybe that this guy Faulkner was, he was just born to do it. And mm -hmm. I thought that, I don't, I don't think I could have done it as well as what he did. Mm -hmm. So I would rather s step back and, you know, um, I guess play Aaron instead of Moses, you yeah. know? Yeah. Any, any supernatural happenings around the edges as you saw in The Passion? Lives changed in the cast and crew, or did you see any of that? Uh, I'm sure I'll remember more later. Uh, I think, th to me, is that the most, the, these movies are really hard to do, mm -hmm. um, and you pray that they're really good, and this one's really good, and the miracle really is what's going to come when people see it and convert. I'll give you one. I was with a, uh, a friend of mine who sat down and watched the movie, and and it doesn't have any um, belief in God did mm -hmm. come from any of that. And he watched the movie, and he, he turned to me after it was over, and he said, um, wow, the writer, what's his name, Andrew Hyatt? He goes, yeah, wow, he's a brilliant philosopher. I said, why, why do you say that? And he started quoting Paul, and I said, yeah, that's in the Bible, dude. <laughs> and so a couple of days later, he called me up and said, yeah, I might want to see the Passion of the Christ. I said, oh, go get your car. He says, I said, I might want to see the Passion mm -hmm. of the yeah. Christ. <laughs> so there's a work in progress, but a seed was planted. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the power what these things can do, you know. Paul, Apostle of Christ, is in theaters everywhere.